If you've been around technology very much or have went to a school in the past while, you've probably seen a lot of these working. This is a Dell Dimension. This one specifically is a 4600. There are lower end versions like the 2400. And this is pretty much something that everybody is starting to throw away now. Old Pentium 4s like this. They're starting to populate the thrift stores for like 40 bucks. Ech. And other stuff like that. Since it's a Pentium 4, it's kind of in an awkward spot, since most of the software designed for these computers can be run on modern computers at, like, way faster speeds. And also, you wouldn't really want to run older software or hardware on these machines since they're not really the best with compatibility with those. So it's sort of in an awkward spot where it's not old enough to have a purpose, but I found a purpose for it. So this is all the hardware inside the machine. It's pretty compact. It's an MATX form factor. I like the I like the shape of this computer. It's really nice. It's easy to take off the side panel. It's just like one simple button in the back. And the hardware is pretty easy to access in general too. First up is the CPU, which is a 2.4 GHz Pentium 4 with hyperthreading. I kind of like the cooler in these cases because it has this green shroud that goes over the heatsink here. And there's no fan on the heatsink itself, but on the back of the case. And the shroud, the shroud directs the air over and through the heatsink out to the back of the case. So it's like direct exhaust for the CPU heat. So that's a pretty nice um, feature there. It keeps it nice and cool inside the case. Most Dell Dimensions I've seen only have two RAM slots. This one has four. I have one gig of RAM in this thing. It's a little bit low for XP standards. I will hopefully upgrade it to two sometime soon. Yeah, that would be good. And this is the video card. It's an ATI Radeon 9600 SE. It's not the strongest thing ever. It's got a passive heatsink, so it kind of like toasts a little bit. But it can play games somewhat decently, older ones usually, or at lower details. This thing also has SATA on it, so it's pretty nice so you can hook up old and new hard drives to the thing, IDE and SATA, so you can pretty much hook up anything to this to test hardware or whatever you want to do with it. So with this machine stuck in the time of not being usable with modern applications or older applications, I just mainly use emulators with a USB controller. It's basically my emulation machine, and it does pretty dang well with it too. Uh, I'm going to start up some Zombies Ate My Neighbors here up on the Super Nintendo, was it the SNES 9X? Oh no, it's the Z-SNES. Um, yeah, that's a fun game. It's really hard though. I can't fucking play it for very long without getting really frustrated because it's just too damn fucking hard. It also runs N64 games pretty dang good too, as you can see here. I think the maximum, like, newest games that it will run smoothly are N64 and PS1 games, although I'm not quite sure with PS1 games, I haven't tried them yet, but I need to try it sometime. But as you can see, it's pretty much playing 60 frames per second on an old game that's designed for, like, less than 30, so this thing is just hauling ass. What emulation machine would be complete without MAME, of all things? This is Space Zap. It's a very interesting game that is like made in the early 80s, maybe late 70s. Um, the game was programmed in color, but the machine itself had a black and white monitor. So obviously the emulation is in color, while the monitor on the machine is not. It's a pretty fun but simple game. You should check it out, obviously. And obviously this thing can play some earlier Windows XP games, although the video card is not that great. This is basically 640x480 with maybe medium-ish settings, and I'm getting an alright frame rate on Postal 2. It's not the smoothest, but it's playable. And also, this game is fucking insane. <laughs> just look what's going on here. Walk into a PlayStation, set everybody on fire, and then... Yeah, almost die. And then this. Red Faction 2 is one of my personal favorite games on machines like this. It's just one of my favorite per first person shooters of all time, especially on PS2 on split screen. The Windows version of this game did not have online multiplayer and that's just like the biggest bummer ever. Ugh, oh, such a big missed opportunity. So if you want a cheap, smaller computer for running MAME or something like that, maybe throw it in a MAME cabinet or something like that, this would be your machine. You don't have to pay the larger prices of mini ITX builds. And also, they are really reliable. This machine came from a school that I used to go to. It was probably working ever since like 2004, like constantly. And it's still running really good today, no bulging caps or anything like that. It's just a nice machine to do stuff on. And also, it might do some light web browsing if you really want it to, but that's probably better left to a 
newer computer because it's kind of sucky, especially Google Chrome for Windows XP now. It's just, ugh. Well, anyway, later.